So I've just given this welder to work on and it's supposed to just been like a routine service thing, check it out, make sure it's still okay, check the output, that sort of stuff. Okay, now these actually come in a big metal enclosure, like a big box carry case thing for them to protect them, because these are used outdoors and all sorts of stuff. And uh, you know, I got out the case like I always do, I know if there's something. Hear that? There's something floating around inside. I'm going to have to open this thing up. I've had a bit of a spate recently. The last couple of welders I've worked on have had screws that have come loose inside them and shorted them out and caused damage. There's one I'm still trying to fix. One I managed to repair, I did a video on that. Another one I'm sort of three quarters of the way through to repair, but I haven't fixed it yet. It's quite badly damaged. So this one I'm hoping isn't damaged because when it's sitting like this in the case, which is how it's normally used, the PCB is actually up the top here. And on the bottom, there's basically nothing. This is things bolted to the back panel, but it shouldn't really matter. So having the screw sitting on the bottom of the panel, if it's been there when it's been operated, then we're probably good. I'm assuming it's a screw, of course. Yeah, it's, it's not a good situation. It seems there's a common thing these days with screws coming out of these things. And you've still got the original factory seals on there. Yeah, but this is used outdoors. It's got rusty screws, rusty panels. It's got rust over here. It's got rust up here. It's, yeah, that's the life of the lead. So the first thing I'm going to do is open this thing up, obviously, because it's I need to get it open to get whatever's rattling around sorted out. So cut them and hopefully dig these screws out and get the screwdriver head into them. But yeah, they've had a bit of abuse. Alright, so I'll try to clean out these screws, try to get the heads cleared so I can actually get the things out. This is the one I'm most worried about down here. Right. Now let's get to the tricky one, because I'm barely even getting that to the head. It's not, it's not really engaging. It's like nothing there. So that's your supplies. Yeah, that's got it. Let's turn it. I think I might have to see if I've got another screw I can put in here. This one's definitely had it. Let's roll it over. So the screws at the bottom and lift it off. Got a gasket around the edge here. So let's, let's cut through that. That should get it moving. There we go. It's a nut. It's now we've got to find where it came from. And in fact, I've got a good idea where it came from. That could be off the triac. I've had one of these before, exactly the same model, and the, the bolt holding the triac onto the heatsink was actually loose. It was coming apart. Maybe this is exactly the same. Well, that was a good guess. I'm right. So, I mean, somewhere in here, there's also a bolt floating around. <laughs> I'll show you. There's the temperature sensor, which is supposed to be attached in here on the triac. So this should be attached to this with a bolt. Some of there's a bolt in here and a washer. There's the bolt, it had dropped out. But I'm pretty sure there's a washer in here somewhere. Somewhere. Okay, found a washer. Stuck on the side right there. Excellent, we got all the bits. Phew, now it's how we didn't do any damage. The good thing about this particular unit, you actually got a cool formal coating on the board. A lot of places actually are completely covered anyway, there's no way of actually shortening them out, which has probably saved this unit because having something floating around in here is not good. There are bits which are exposed along this header and stuff like that, there are bits which aren't actually formally coated, but of course most of it is. The chance of shorting out something critical is much less. Both sides of the board are done, so it's um it's actually pretty good that way. It's good this manufacturer did this. That could have well saved this unit from being completely blown. We'll find out. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could be blown because this is disconnected and maybe it wasn't working properly. I don't know, but we'll put it back together and we'll power it up and do some testing on it. So what you can actually see from this bolt is that there is no kind of thread locking on it. Right? There's no thread locker, which is why they come loose. Bit of a design flaw there. They haven't actually thread locked it. So I actually got some thread lock and I will thread lock this on so it doesn't do this again. So you go, that's what that attached back in there now. So that's the temperature sensor back on and everything bolted on and it's also got the thread lock on it so that won't come off again. I'll do test all the cables, test all the electrical wiring, 
check the fittings, stuff like that, and then once all that's checked out, then I can power it up and test it and see if it works. Hopefully that's what's wrong with it. So let's try this thing out for the first time. I've got it hooked up to my test rig. So I've got my 20 ohm resistance here. Multimeter measuring AC volts, because it should output about 100 volts AC to generate 500 watts in this particular loading. Everything's hooked up. Got the outputs going to the resistor. Meter probe's going to there, kind of shoved in. All right, power switch is here somewhere. There it is. Hmm. Power switch. It is. No power. Hmm. So, it's dead. That's great. Now, oh, keep looking. Okay, let's check this out. So, short across both ends of the plug, because I'm going to do a quick test a bit more quickly. Terminal's on the board. Okay, there's connection right through to the circuit board. So the switch is working. Let's turn the switch off, make sure it definitely shuts off properly as well. Yep, that's good. So, switch is working. It isn't a switch fault. Now, there are two fuses on the board, so I'm going to check those next. So I pulled the covers off the fuses. Let's see what we get. Okay. And okay. Well, that's not good. So I did just find one thing. I should explain a bit about what these are. This is current sensing coil, right? So the output wire goes through this, and this is sensing the current on the output. This is a, like a filter. This just passes through this. See how loose this wire is? Oh, look, it fell out. Do you think that could be the problem? The other one, it's fine. <laughs> so, let's get through here with my promoter screwdriver. This will just reach through this connection and just get it in. And that screw is just really loose. Look at that, it's just flopping around. It's almost like it was never done up. But then it's, that's have witness marks on there, so that's a bit weird. Now, let's shove that back in. There we go, that's in. Let's do this up. tight. Unfortunately I can't quite get onto the other one like that, but we'll check it anyway. As much as I can. Yeah, that's all right. And this one, can I get onto here? Yeah, kind of. I suppose I should check the bottom one too to be absolutely sure. Yeah, got a little bit out of that. Let's try it again. All right, power is applied. Let's turn the switch on. And it's still dead. Hmm. Power switch is lighting up, should confirm that. Yes, it is. So, oh dear. There's more going on yet. So, we've got another problem to fix. I have a suspicion what this could be. Now, this is posted, right? This was posted to be repaired. Well, serviced. <laughs> as expected, it's turned to repair, as it tends to be for some reason. Well, I can just say it's broken. Just, anyway, this was sent to the post. And it's quite likely it was badly handled. It could have been dropped or thrown around a little bit or thrown like one place to another as some postal systems can do. Some postal people are not very careful. They just don't really care. Anyway, so what I think has probably happened it's been handled in the post and it's been banged. Now, the other one is previously which had cracked traces on the transformer. And in fact, I think it even had issue with the transformer being damaged. I had to repair the transformer because it actually ripped the winding. So I'm suspecting now that the transformer which powers the electronics is dead because there's no power. That's my suspicion. It's a heavy transformer, hang off a circuit board, it's not bolted or anything, it's got a cable tie around it, so I can just break this old connection on the circuit board or break the transformer itself. That's what I found before when I've repaired a previous one of these. I did a video on it ages ago, um, so you can actually go back and look at that if you want, but I think that could be what's wrong with this. So I need to pull it apart again, actually just take the circuit board out. That's the only way to find out, is actually pull it all apart and try powering it up out of the case and um, see if we've got power then. Although I could always check power at the voltage regulators. That will tell us straight away if it's power at the voltage regulators. We could do that before I take it out. Um, that will definitely confirm it either way. I reckon it's likely to be the transformer. When I repaired the previous one, I actually did a lot of reverse engineering. I actually reverse engineered most of the circuit board and drew my own circuit diagrams up for it because there's nothing available for these. You know, it's not the sort of thing gets released. So I do actually have a diagram to refer to if I want to troubleshoot stuff with my own previous notes as well. I was remembering this incorrectly. This isn't a main, well, it kind of is a main transformer, but this is on the output of the unit, right? So the output runs through this to filter the output. It's not the mains input side. So though it was a bad connection, it wouldn't have actually been causing the no power situation. I was remembering that wrong. This is what I'm thinking here. You've got this transformer. 
it's sort of mounted on here like that. It's also a smaller one next to it. The last time that one was okay, this one is the one which failed because it had a bit of plane. I mean, it's cable ties, not exactly tight. See that movement in there? Maybe? I don't know, you can see it. You probably can't because my finger's in the way. But anyway, that's not tight. So this has got very little effect. The transformer's probably dislodged. That's my suspicion. So this is going to be a little bit dark. That's a 5 volt regulator right there. There is a 3.3 volt regulator. Okay, so we're going to check this one first. If we've got power on here, we might be okay. Um, it might not be, well, may not be okay, but if there's no power there, this transformer's bad because this transformer goes through this bridge rectifier. It's got some other stuff going on, it's got a diode and stuff through to here as well, and then it goes to this regulator. And so we need to make sure that all this stuff is working. So, bridge rectifier, regulator, transformer, second regulator. Okay, this is now live, so be careful what I touch. Turn the power on. Let's probe onto the circuit board here. I've actually scratched away some of the conformal coding here and also on the regulator. So, nothing there, nothing there. Let's just recheck from this point. Yep, yeah, we've got no power going to the regulator. That's looking promising then. Come to the transformer. Right, taking the old screws out. It's kind of you have to take a couple of connections off the top here for the sensor, temperature sensor, and the output for serial output. And then you take the screws up the front panel and then you can get it out like this. A bit of dust in there, look. How do you get dust in there it's sealed? That's curious. Here's transformers down here. It's had a bit of a hard life, I think. Okay, so let's look for any problems down here, but it may not be obvious. So let's measure this thing now. I've got to hook up the power. Let's turn the power switch on and let's see what we get. So there's a trade transformers, one here, one here. And these are the AC input, the mains inputs here. So it's probably one of these. I've already scratched away the conformal coding. Yep, okay, we've got mains power going there. That's a good start. Now I need to try and probe up here and see if we've got anything up here. I haven't scratched away the conformal coding on here though. Yeah, I'll turn it back off again. I'll scratch away the conformal coding on those terminals and I'll check it again. All right, let's give it a scratch. Turn the power back on, see if we can get anything. Six volts AC. No. Six point five volts AC. I'm pretty sure it's actually fifteen. I'm not sure that's right. I need to go and check my notes. I'm pretty sure it's fifteen volts that's supposed to come out. This is not six volts. So I check my notes, and these are supposed to be twelve volt windings on this transformer. So it should be two twelve volt windings in parallel to increase the current. So it should be at fifteen volts of rectified DC, basically. Is what I was thinking of fifteen volts from. We're obviously not getting that. I'm going to pull this transformer out because I'm thinking it could be the primary cybers come off because if it was one of the secondaries, you'd still be getting high voltage or at least some kind of life. You'd get no voltage at all, so I think it's just ghost voltage is really just being induced slightly. So I think we need to actually get this out and check all the connections for the tapping for the transformer because I think one of them's broken. Well, I think my theory might be right. I was just desoldering all these legs with my desoldering gun, and as I suck this pin, disappear. It's gone. I actually pulled the whole pin out. So I think that pin was obviously dislodged, otherwise that wouldn't have happened. So it's got tape underneath to hold it onto the circuit board, but tape's not great because it's got a bit of flex in it anyway. So I've cut through that, it's got one pin I've got to get out I think, and then I should be able to pull the transformer off the board. This pin here is being a little bit stubborn. So there you go, there's the bottom transformer. So there's that pin which is missing. See it's obviously fractured off. So I need to check all these windings to make sure they seem like they're intact. They look alright actually. I think purely the issue was that this pin here had fractured. I'm not sure I'm going to fix that. Hmm. So there's the pin from the side there. So I've had to cut away the side so I can get to it. So what I think I can do if I unsolder the winding off that pin, I can probably take that broken pin out, replace it with something else, and solder that wire back on again. I think that's really my only solution. All right, here's the winding. I managed to slide it off the pin and Here's the, what's left of the pin, so I'll just put something else through there. I'm sure I can find something. I've got myself a bit of component lead, I was looking at some header pin, but then I'm thinking, well, I need to kind of bend it around as well and get it in place. And I do have some like right angle header pins, but then you've got to try and get it in that gap and push it down, but then it's not going to be sticking out by much, so probably not enough. So I'm just going to get a piece of component lead like this, and we shall bend this around in here, and we'll make this fit. I might actually just like loop it around or something to give it some strength in here. Maybe run it through another pin or something, but because um, I obviously don't want to desolder the wires 
when I soldered this pin up because that would also be bad. So there we go, that's that in there. So what I'm going to do, that's actually soldered on now, I'm going to put some epoxy or something in here to secure that, to hold it in place and hope that it never ever breaks again. We can hope. So this has got uh, the epoxy on there now, it's basically dry, it's pretty hard now so I think I can probably put it back together. It's supposed to be like a 8 to 12 hour curing time according to the actual instructions on the epoxy but it's already hard so I'm not too worried about that. So let's put this thing back in again see if it actually works. Actually before I put it back in, let's check the windings to make sure the windings aren't open in case there's another fault which I haven't detected. 6 ohms outside, 5 to 6 ohms outside, and the primary, about 400 ohms. Yeah, that sounds alright. Should be fine. Right, let's solder back in. Let's try to turn the power on see what happens. Does it go bang? Does something else go wrong? Hey! It's working. Okay, let's try this again. Maybe this time. Got to hood up to the gear again, got the meter ready, like I did before. Turn the power on. Right. Maintenance and arm, that's fine. I've got nothing I've got to do with that. Let's try and do a world and see if we get 100 volts or thereabouts on that meter. 95 volts. Okay. Slightly low. Let me check the resistance of this because it could be that this resistance isn't quite right. Because if this resistance isn't quite right, then it will actually cause a voltage difference. So I'm getting 19.7 ohms across there, so it works out as about 4.87 amps. Should be doing 5 amps, so it's very slightly down and times that by about 96, which is about the voltage I got. So it's about 467 watts. Yeah, it's a little bit weak. Hmm. I think I figured out how the dust got into the screen. This panel is peeling off. I need to fix that too. This is interesting. It's in Italian. It has various languages built into it. You have to choose the language. When you do a reset, it actually goes back to Italian by default. So, um, yeah. And it's like it was due for maintenance over a year ago. So it looks like whoever did the reset last time to clear the maintenance didn't actually um, set the language on it. Curious. So I've done the reset. Now I should power it back up again. Oh, I didn't do the reset. Right, I set the language to English. Now I've done all that other stuff. English. Done. That should all be working. I've already set the date and time up again. That should now be good. Just turn it off. Give it a chance to power down. I'll power it back up again to make sure it's actually reset. It is. Job done. Actually, I'll show you a secret function. Other functions. So when I was doing work on these before, I did a bunch of reverse engineering. And part of that was me trying to basically figure out what many systems are there, you know, stuff which isn't documented. Anyway, I found this one for a start. Let's see design this thing. So it's a bit of a messy job, but we got there in the end and it's all fixed now. At least until the next time. <laughs> These keep coming back from time to time, let's get a bit of a rough life. If you're interested in these units and want to see my other repairs I've done on these, go and check out my other videos I've done. I think I've got a playlist of these actually, I think I've got a Electrofusion playlist, I'm pretty sure I have. I showed the various ones, I've worked on a few of these units now. So, um, all similar thoughts or interesting things, I've had a few interesting quirks along the way. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're not subscribed, Kiss you later.